In Singapore, young couples who are at least 21 years old can apply for a built-to-order or BTO flat offered by the government. But it's not easy to get a BTO due to high demand and it takes a waiting time of around three years before you can even collect the keys. So gentlemen, some people apply several times. Is waiting for a BTO ultimately worth it? Bye, let's start with you. Um, so for BTOs, um, usually you can get them at a 50% discount from resale, uh, the resale flats around that uh, area. So in the long run, if you're okay to wait and you do get a queue number, I think it is uh, very worth it. And oftentimes people tend to ballot for the more popular areas, but the uh, less popular areas are usually uh, under balloted, right? Mm. So why not just go for the less demanded areas? And uh, amenities are coming up, like for example, Tenga, I mm. think it'll look really good. And uh, 20 years ago, Sengkang had nothing much, but now it's one of the most hottest uh, HDB markets out there. It is. So you can really bet on that. Uh, growth. Mm. Navin, how do you maximise the grants uh, that are made available to us and what do you need to know about them when applying for grants specific to BTOs? You know, sometimes it's good to, to lock in a BTO early when you are earning less. You can take advantage of more grants. And I think recently um, the government has released uh, some new cooling measures. It actually helps people with uh, looking for a first flat to have more grants, especially for first families. I think the number has gone up from 80,000, I think, to 120. When choosing a BTO flat, what should be the very top considerations? Uh, we also have to bear in mind those new rules when it comes to prime HDB flats as well, yeah? Obviously, if you can land yourself a good area, then you know your returns could be quite impressive. Uh, but Nowadays, of course, going forwards from the October BTO exercise onwards, uh, the plus and prime frets will be going through an extended MOP. Mm. So then you've got to ask yourself the consideration as well. You, you are locking in yourself pretty much for a very long tenure. And this tenure, if you take in the construction period plus the booking plus the um, tenure MOP as well, you could be out of the market for the next 14 years. So you've got to ask yourself the question, is there a probability that you might need to move mm. within these 14 years? If you're planning double income, no kids, you don't have to worry about schools and stuff like that, and you really love this location that you're getting into, the 14, 10, 14-year 14 tenure might not be such a biggie for you, right? Yeah, but I think time is very important to always have as a consideration because you can never buy time back. Yeah. And I have to remind people that in Singapore, uh, you know, the government allows you to borrow up to 65. If you are 30 years old today, you go into your first BTO, plus 14 years, 44 is the next time you can pretty much do a change. <laughs> you don't have much time left after that, going That's to right. 65. So these, I think, are serious considerations. Again, you can see it's a, a nuance between your life aspirations, but also in terms of like the aspiration for financing. Mm. Some people want to flip, they want to get out of it, they want to grow, they aspire to have a portfolio of real estate. So locking yourself in and taking yourself out of the market for over a decade is quite a bit of opportunity cost that you have to think about. Unmarried couples often are the ones that apply for these BTO flats, right? The fact that you're young and if the relationship doesn't work out, you know, what are your exit routes then? Depending on which stage of your journey you are, you might face some uh, serious, um, you know, drawbacks. So the first one is uh, if, you are, if, if you have been invited to pick a house and uh, you break up at that point, then uh, you just lose the $10 booking fee. Right. So if you do it two times, then you lose your first time, first timer privilege. Right. So the second one is uh, when you've already picked a unit, but uh, you have not signed the sales and purchase agreement. Mm. In that case, you lose your option fee. Okay. And uh, I believe you'll be barred from applying for BTOs for one year. Mm. So the third one is where you've already signed the SNP. This is where you will lose all your down payments, your option fee and all the grants that have been given to you. Ouch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and you also uh, be barred for a year. Mm. The worst is when you've collected your keys, but you fail to submit your ROM. Mm. In this case, you'll be barred from applying for a BTO for several years, right. and uh, HDB will pay you back what they think is fair. Mm. So what then overall are the pros and cons of buying 
sale of balance BTO flats. That's quite a unique segment of the market there. So sales of balance flats, uh, usually the pool is much lesser. So you might have a thing where there's lower supply and higher demand. So it might be slightly harder than BTOs. And at the same time, since these are sales of balance flats, you might have lesser options to pick from. Mm -hmm. But the great thing is, um, if you do manage to land a sales or balance flat, usually you can instantly move in okay. and it will still be at a relatively discounted rate from the resale market. Mm. So if you do manage to land it, I think it's the best of both worlds, right? You don't have to wait <laughs> yeah. and you can move in with a discounted price. Navin, what about the alternatives to getting a BTO? Obviously, the resale market is one. Yeah, resale market is one and uh, I think like Vice mentioned, um, sale of balance and uh, with, with regards to the resale market, I think you, you have that wealth of options, you know, ready to move in. Mm -hmm. But of course with that, it comes a bit more of cost, upfront cost will be higher um, and you know, the market forces actually take how much uh, uh, the flat will cost. <laughs>